Well, howdy and welcome to the Bender Bunker, your online resource for Be Bender Country Guitar since 2017, and a lesson we're calling the Major Minor, which all came about for me hanging out in the bunker, having a few beers the other day with some music in the background on the hi-fi system, as you do. And on came a tune I'd heard many, many times. It was the live version of the Bird's Classic, Drugstore, Truck Driving Man. So this being a live version, you got Clarence kicking things off with his Bender guitar. And then what really stood out to me this time, because I've heard the song many times, but what jumped out at me was how seamlessly Clarence was navigating with his Bender passages between the major and minor key changes of the song. Which then led me to think, well, heck, how much time have we spent here in the bunker over the years on minor key Bender passages and transitioning between the two? Answer, not that much. Mostly we stick with, you know, uh, with three chords in the truth. And most of the time, those three chords are in a major key because the major keys lend themselves so well with bending to the uh, classic country and Western that we feature here. So I thought, hey, let's circle back, spend some time in a minor key. Let me show you my two favorite and primary bender positions for minor key work and how I transition between the majors and minors. Now, I needed to come up with a backing track, that intro you just heard, and so I thought, you know, what could it be? I've got to have major, i got to have minor, and I thought, well, why not? Just, let's not reinvent the wheel. The birds have already given us some nice key changes, so the more astute listeners would have already picked up that those are chord changes from the birds tune that I mentioned, and we'll be using those. Now, this in no way is a birds lesson. I'm not going to show you what Clarence was doing in that live version. That's why there's no mention of it in the lesson. There's nothing, there's no picture of Clarence next to me in the thumbnail. Although it would get me a lot more subscribers, that'd be a bit disingenuous. Now, what this is, is being inspired by that to then walk you through how I like to transition between the majors and the minors. And hopefully you'll get something out of that. But I didn't want to lead anybody astray. This is not a bird's lesson. It was just inspired by it. Because I like to be inspired by the great players, but I don't necessarily enjoy copying them. All right, if that sounds good to you, go grab the Bender instrument of your choice. And uh, let's get going now with the major minor lesson here at the Bender Bunker. I thought a great way to start would be to show you the actual backing chords that we'll be playing our Bender parts over, borrowed loosely from the Bird's Classic. And that way uh, you'll know exactly where we're headed because all the bender parts I'm about to show you are indeed matched up with the key changes of the backing track. So here we go. I would say grab a partner because we're about to go into a three quarter waltz and it sounds like this indeed. <laughs> there in the dominant key of D. We're going to E minor. That's where we're going to cover the two primary uh, minor key bender positions I spoke of earlier. We go to A7. Always very fertile bender ground if you ask me. And we, then we are indeed going to be match, matching our bender parts to that descending G. F sharp over D. E minor. D. And also here is the lick in isolation. This is part one. We're going to work on this first. Here we go. get you through all those now before we go in deep deep detailed note by note action as we always do just want to take a moment to enlist your help to keep the channel supported and growing if you would now if you come this far and you're still watching me talk you may very well be an enjoyer of the content what we call a content enjoyer and that's okay I'm not going to tell anyone but I would like a quick thumbs up just let the YouTube algorithm know that you are indeed enjoying the content and you would like to see more hot bender action thank you if you're brand new to the bender bunker and we'd love to have you in the family as a subscriber Quick and easy way to do that is the subscription button waiting for you in the bottom corner. That way you click on that, won't miss anything coming up in the future. And you can also circle back to our main channel page where over 65 Bender lessons are waiting for you there. You can get lost for days. So again, hit that subscription button, join the Bunker family. Be great to have you on board. Also what other channels, instructional channels called Virtual Tip Jar, we tend to call buying the Bunker a virtual round of beers because indeed all the money received is primarily spent on beer. It's the least I can do for you, the home bender. And you can do that safely and securely with the Bender Bunker's very own PayPal link, which is located in the details section below. Just expand that out. You'll see our PayPal link there. You can send over a virtual beer donation amount of your choice. And uh, then you can watch me drink those beers with the Instagram link you'll see down there as well. Also, a quick thank you to everybody that's already sent over virtual beer donations this year. It's great to have the cold beer in the fridge as we go for these crazy summer temps here in Central Texas, which have already started.
All right, let's get rolling with part one. We are in the key of D and we're using a very traditional pedal steel influence opening lick. Let's start with this. And what we like to call the bender box, the bender box for D in this case. So let's go ahead and take our index finger top two on the fifth and then on the third and fourth string on the seventh, use your little finger and ring finger. So your top four strings are on the five and the seven frets. That's the bender box for D. And we're going to go ahead and get that position and we're going to go ahead and start with three notes down here on the seventh fret on your fourth string and your third string. It's going to go four string, three string, four string. And I probably am just ever so slightly letting my ring finger on that fourth string go down to the sixth and pick that note as I slide into the seventh for that sound. And then I go straight to the G string seven, come right back to the four string seven. Then I go ahead and hit that B string fifth, take the bender up for the first time and hold it. Take it all the way up, make sure you get it nice and in pitch. And then you've got the bender engaged, go ahead and hit the high E already covered there as well for note. All right, bender's engaged. That allows you to take your bottom strings off the seventh, keep your index finger anchored on the fifth. Little finger wanders over to the B string eighth for a note to let the bender down. This millisecond to get down off of that bend there on the B string, we go ahead and hit that B string, take the little finger off and hit the B string with the index and take the bender back up on the fifth. So we're down on the eighth, back up on the fifth because we never moved our index. And that's why you see me throw that neck when I was doing that lick is because I'm trying to get the bender back up and make it one kind of down and back up on the bender fluid motion. <laughs> Okay, bender's back up, and let's go ahead and hit the high E fifth for a note, and then back to the B string for a note to bring the bender down. And in that sequence on the G string seventh with our ring finger. So that whole thing. Just work on getting it fluid between coming down on the eighth and back up on the fifth on the B string. Now the backing track is going to E minor. So we're going to learn the two primary minor bender shapes I spoke of earlier. We're going to go from shape one straight into shape two. Sounds like this. All right, so let's start with the beginning here, shape one, before we get to shape two. Think of a D minor, just a straight D minor chord. No big deal, right? Cowboy chord. And then go ahead and take it up two, and now you're in E. That's, that's minor position one that we're going over here, and that's what we're going to work out of this lick. Bender's unengaged. We just came on. Bender's unengaged. We immediately go into that position there. The D minor moved up two for E minor, right? And we do this lick, and let's see. If I was picking it, I would start on the third string and down pick the top three, take the bender up with that. Hold it for a second. I would do one note on the high E fifth with my little finger. Come back to the G string that's still covered there on the fourth. Take the little finger, off, little finger off and do the high E third this time, being covered already in that chord shape by your index finger. And then I would go to the B string fifth that is covered in that chord shape with my uh, ring finger to let the bender down. So up and, so that chord shape, three, top three strings, bender goes up. And then hit the B string to let it down. on the bender and we're going to move up to minor position two like this so minor position two is exactly this it is these top three strings and that's index finger on the top string seventh then we go b string eighth and g string ninth like that another way to think about that of course would be to take an a minor shaped bar chord that you would use for e minor if you're barring it right we're just borrowing the top three strings of that for that shape. So here's how we get from one to two. So we come down on the bender, we're unengaged by the time we finish one. And the minute we come down, we've already got our ring finger in place on the B string fifth. We're gonna go ahead and, and 
do that. We still got some audio because it's the very last thing we pick on that position, right? That's what we're letting the bender down with in sequence one. Right there. So I get it down kind of quick, use that audio that's still ringing and slide it up to the target of, of fret 10 on the B string. As I'm sliding up to 10, I'm also bringing the bender back into play. So by the time I end up on 10, I'm slid and I've re-engaged the bender fully. Sounds like that. Only doing that for a second, that allows us to get the bender engaged. And then we go into that shape I just showed you, index finger top string on the seventh, then you just fall into place on eight and nine like that, right? Start with your high E, then go to the B string to let the bender down. And then end on that G string ninth. And that's position two for E minor. So put position one, position two. I use the heck out of those two when I'm in a situation where I need to do some bender work over the minor keys because those go so transposed so easily to all the other keys you'd ever want to play in. If I don't have anything else to do, I can start with one or two of those and almost always be in the money. So that's what I'd recommend. Let's get that nice and fluid. And then we end up with the bender unengaged. Now the backing track is going to a seventh. Well, good news. We just ended up right here. That's what the bender came down. We've already got the makings of a nice three uh, string a seventh bender shape. So we're already in position, but all we're going to do is use the top two strings of it. So we just came down, came down and switched over like this for the uh, seventh bender shape for A. I'm going to let my ring finger go top string on the ninth, and then my index finger go on the B string next to it on the eighth. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and do two hits of it and take the bender up each time. And on the second time, I'm going to hold the bender and then hold it engaged. And then I'm going to do a real quick note with my little finger on the high E 10th. So we've got two and then the high E 10th. Bender still engaged. And then I'm popping up here because we're still in A and we can use the top end of the A bender box to our advantage. And I'm gonna use my, uh, probably my ring finger. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the top two on the 12th. And I'm just gonna go high E, B string down to let the bender, let the bender down. And once it comes down, then I'm gonna switch to this shape. Not too hard, because you've already got your ring finger there on the top two on the 12th. So the bender comes down, you're switching it over so the ring finger is just the high E on the 12th, and then your index finger goes down to the B string on the 10th. Now the backing track's doing a real brief pass at the G chord going down the neck, as we saw in the opening. So I'll Good news, my index finger is already to play with a real short top of the G bender box, so I can do a real quick up and down. And then the index finger covers the top two on the 10th. I pick that and take it up and down. So here we go. Now the bender's unengaged, and I'm gonna end this whole sequence of part one by going back down to where we started the party in the D bender box shape, top three strings. So my index finger goes right back down, covers the top two on the fifth, ring finger falls naturally on the third string seventh. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the unengaged bender. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the high E on the fifth, then go over to the G string, and then I'll hit the top two on the fifth, covers my index and take the bender. Up. I think in the opening, I did the bender up and down twice, like that. So off that A7 shape. Like that. All right, real quick, here is part one. got the bender engaged let's keep it that way and i will see you for part two coming up now let's finish strong with part two now we last left our hand in the d bender box area part one with that final 
then I ask you to keep the bender box section there engaged with the bender, the bender engaged. And then what I'm doing is I'm letting my pick hand kind of cover the back of the strings to mute the audio gently because I've got to take a trip all the way up to the 17th fret with my little finger. So I don't want to hear too much movement with my hand. So the pick hand kind of comes in, mutes that, get up here, little fingers covering the top two on the 17th fret now. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start with the high E, then go to the B to let it down for a one, two. And then I'm forming the octave of a D open D bar chord on the third and second string. And the way I'm doing that is my index finger is going to the third string 14th and my middle finger is going next to it on the B string 15th, right? This is a four note sequence. We just did the first two of four. So we came down one, two, and then I'm going into this position right here and when I get that in shape I'm doing the third string 14th and then picking the B string 15th and taking the bender back up. So the bender is coming down on the second note and it's going back up on the fourth note of the four note sequence. Okay we did those four notes and now the bender's back fully engaged. Let's keep it that way. We're moving down because the backing track is still in D. We're going to do another D lick here. Why not just go ahead and use the top three strings of what would be a D bar chord? That'll work nicely for us. At least that's the way I'm thinking about it. And so I go ahead and do my index finger on the top two on the 10th and then my middle finger on the third string 11th that form the top three strings of a D bar chord. Same four note mentality starting on the high E. Hit the B string and bender comes down. Third string 11th. And then go ahead and hit the B string back on the 10th again to take the bender back up. Again, the bender's coming down on the second, back up on the fourth note. You can hit all three, hit the B string singly. You can't go wrong because it's, it's a nice D top end of a bar chord. So here we go. And you'll hear the backtrack with that uh, three quarters rhythm. We've got the bender back engaged. Now the backing track is going to E minor. So we're going to pop down off of this position back to that position one I showed you for the minor. That's your D minor moved up to for E minor. So we've got a pre-engaged bender. We're coming off of this. We go back down here, get that position. Position one is that we learned earlier. And then the same mentality. Start with your high E and then on that chord shape. And then when you get your B string, let your bender down. Go ahead and hit the third string fourth. And then come back to the B string and take it back up, because again, we're going down on the second note, back up on the fourth. This time we're gonna add a little bit more to it though. Index finger comes off of the high E third, so we can do an open E string. All right, that was an open E. And then I go back to the B string on the fifth there to let the bender back down. There's a little bit more to this than the other two. So again, Now we've got an open high E ringing within the B string on the fifth and the G string on the fourth. Works nicely for the E minor. So those three together. All right, now the backing track goes to A7. So we're doing this uh, little lick for that. So I just came off that E minor. Bender's unengaged. I let my index finger go down to an A note. That is the third string second, right? And that's all I'm doing right there. Index finger, third string second. And then I'm. you can down pick starting on the third string and take the bender up at those top three strings. Hold the bender fully engaged and do one note on the high E second with your middle finger. Come right back to the third string second. And then go back to the E string, but this time open. So it's up. Keep the bender engaged. Bender's still engaged. Now I'm gonna do another, four, that's a four note sequence. I'm gonna do another four note sequence. It's gonna be two quick live notes followed by two dead notes. So what I'm doing there, keeping the bender engaged, got my middle finger now I'm gonna let that go just above the index finger and then pick it and slide it up to the target of the third string six and when I get there index fingers are ready to go right into the high E fifth 
for a note. This is all happening very quick, as you're about to see. And the next thing I do, you can either put a finger down over the strings, your back, your hand, whatever you want, but I want to do two quick dead notes, because that's one, two, followed by three, four on the dead notes. So all together on that, so you can go into... Remember, the bender's already engaged. Then after you do the two dead notes, you come back, take your fingers off, hit the B string open, and let the bender down when you... And then end right where you started on that third string, second, A note. So all together. All right, now the backing track is doing one last pass on that G down. So we just got our hand down here. What can we do? Well, we got to get to G real quick, and then we're going to do an E minor. And then we're going to end back on the dominant key of G. So the way I'm going to do that is like this. So we just came off of our little twangy lick there in A. Fender's unengaged. Now, I'm going to do a real quick pass in G because the backing track is going to G. I'm going to do that with the top three strings of a G bar chord. So I'm going straight into there. So index finger, top two on the third, and then middle finger on the third string, fourth, right? Start there, take the bender up with those three, top three strings. So that, and then I do, I think, an extra note on the high E third once I take it up. Bender's still engaged. Let's do, now we're gonna do a real quick pass at the E minor that's happening in the background. And the way we do that is we're right here already, as you can tell, for our minor position one that we've been using this whole time for E minor. Well, let's just do a real quick version of that. We've already got our middle finger where we need it on the third string fourth. Let's just move over with our ring finger to the B string fifth. And then we can do a two note starting with your third string and this. So we go up with the G, switch it over for a two note. Bender's still engaged. We're not doing anything with the bender on this E minor part. Up with the G. And now we're going to let the bender down. Just take that shape down here. Make a D chord, open D chord. Don't care about the uh, top string, high E. I'm just going to use the second and third to let the bender down. So we're up with G. Quick pass with the bender engaged for E minor. And then down with D. So coming out of that A7 section. And I'm using my little finger actually. I go up with the G. Sink my little finger in there to the B string fifth. And then I just go down there for the third string, second string D. I like the bender down. All right, part two all together. All right, now this, if I was you, I would go ahead and maybe go back on the video, watch the opening again, because now you know part one and part two. Put them together, watch that opening, it's gonna make complete sense. I'm going to come back for a real brief pass at a couple of extras I mentioned. If you want to learn a little bit more along these lines, uh, that's coming up next. Otherwise, you already know part one and part two. Go have fun. All right, back with the extras. Extras, are you kidding me? This video is not long enough for you. Hey, if you're still with me, you're hardcore and I appreciate that. Let's give you a couple of quick variations on a theme, give you a little bit more to work with based on what we just learned for part two. I'm going to keep the very first section, the four notes and then the four notes. I'm going to keep that exactly the same. So we start up here on the 17th fret like we did before. Same thing for the second part. Now, before we were going down here to minor position one with the E minor for the backing track, let's not do that. This will be the variation. Let's use the second minor variation we learned right here. It's even closer to what we were just doing here in D. So let's just use that to our advantage right there. So let's do something along the lines of. So 
So as we come off of that second D, let's go ahead and let the bender fall back down on engage after our D section there. And then let's go ahead and get in the exact position. You already know the second minor position, which is the top three strings, seven, eight, and nine on the frets. And once you get that, bender's unengaged, then let me see if I can do it picked. I would go, starting on the third string, I would down pick all three and take the bender up. And once I have that, I would pick my way individually back down, starting on the high E, never moving the chord shape. So up with all three at once, back down, picking individually. Then I would come up to the high E string, but I would take my index finger off for an actual high E open E string. Come back to the third string, ninth and then hit the B string eighth to let the bender down. That's how it sounds. I prefer doing it with my thumb and index finger. So for context, here's a, uh, coming out of what you already know for part two. All right, so practice getting that fluid. Now, backing track goes to A7. We did that fancy twangy little number. Remember this one? Let's keep the first half of that, right? The first four notes so that that stays the same. Bender's engaged. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of let the back of my hand mute the strings, get a little control over the ringing, hop up here to the top two strings on the 12th fret, and use harmonics. So I'm going to go high E, B string, harmonic notes. Remember, the bender's still engaged. And I'm gonna go high E, B string, and then unengage and re-engage with the bender. Just like that. So. Takes a little bit of practice. There it is, okay. So we've got that ringing now, the bender's still engaged. So now we've gotta go do that G, E minor, D section we did before to get on out of here and in part two. Well, before we were going into the G section with the bender unengaged, now it is engaged. So let's use that to our advantage. Let's go ahead and make the exact same thing we did when we ended part two before. Top three strings of a G bar chord. So top two on the third and the fourth string on the, or the third string on the fourth, I should say again. Those, right? So since I'm engaged on the bender, I'm gonna work on the high E down with the bender. Just chase those three exact notes. Just chase it down with the bender, starting on the high E, letting the bender down when I get to the B string. Now the bender's unengaged, going to E minor in the backing track. Same as before, we're gonna let our little finger go to the B string fifth. And I'm just gonna do a two note pick right there, double stop. Again, that's gonna be the third string fourth and the B string fifth to mimic the E minor. Take the bender back up with those two notes. So come down with the top three strings of a G bar chord. Go back up with the two notes for the E minor. And instead of going like we did before, which is the third and second string of an open D chord, let's do this. This is a nice variation. Let's go and let our little our index finger go to the B string third and let our middle finger go over to the fourth string fourth, which is an F sharp bass note. And let's go for those together. So I'll show you in sequence here, starting on the engaged G. E minor, and then back down with that two note sequence I just showed you for D. All right, all together. to work with as if you needed more uh, we try and sometimes you say hey bender bunker is too much value and i say nonsense extras are fun all right that's all i've got for you i'm gonna get on out of here and let you work on that let's end as we always do with our motto it is never too late to go on a bender and now you're going to be comfortable hopefully bendering in either major or minor keys because they're both sides of the same bender coin all right go practice that enjoy yourself i'll see you again real soon here at the bunker with some more hot bender action in the near future until then keep it bent